Okay guys, we're making a video on the front brake rotor and pad replacement on a 2020 Yukon XL Denali. This goes for the anything 2020 back to 2015 or vice versa 2015 to 2020. Basically all models of Yukons, Tahoes, Suburbans, Yukon XLs, the Denali trim, the SLT trim, it doesn't matter. This one happens to have 22 inch wheels, but the rotors and the brake pads themselves are still the same size. So these are the tools that you'll need. I just did the other side and this is exactly what I use out of my consortment of tools that I have. Um, breaker bar, 18 on there, however you want to set it up. Brake hardware that comes with your new pads. 22 millimeter impact to take your lug nuts off. Wheel lock adapter if you have the wheel locks on there. Um, some brake cleaner, a little bit of grease. Um, hammer, you don't necessarily need a hammer, it kind of helps you tap in if you get a little stuck. That uh, flathead screwdriver, some anti seize roll of paper towels. Um, I'm gonna, oh, let's not forget, yeah, some big channel locks. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to collapse your calipers back in. Some people use a C clamp. Um, I, I like to just use big, big channel locks, and then I'll get on the back of the caliper, put the old pad in there, and I'll squeeze together and collapse that. Um, you know, I guess the caliper plunger back in, you'd call it. So let me get this tire off, and I'll be right back. Take these off, 19 millimeter, three quarter. Um, take that bolt out, take that bolt out, right there. This caliper will come off, take the... Uh, Flathead screwdriver, put it right in there, wedge out a little bit, this will come off. Um, I'll grab that piece of wire, you want to get a piece of wire, a zip tie, go right through there, bring your caliper, lay it up here, zip tie it to this so it doesn't accidentally fall. You don't want to damage your main brake line there. Um, once you get that out, you can pull your pads off each side, do as you wish with them. You'll kind of see the orientation of how they go back in there when we uh, get to the next step of the video. And then after you get your pads off, you're gonna wanna get a 18 mil, that breaker bar, and it'll be this top one here, and this bottom one right here. This will take the whole caliper assembly off, I guess we call that, or the caliper bracket. This is the caliper with the plungers in it. This is a bracket that holds the pads. So I'll do those two steps, and we'll be right back. So right here, I've got an old brake pad there. And we're gonna collapse these plungers. I need to use both of my hands, so I'll have to set the video down. I'm just letting you know how I do that. You know, you get your channel lock, make sure it's on the area. It's not hitting that line. Put an old brake pad in there and squeeze, and you want both those plungers to be completely flush. Otherwise, your new pads that you put in here won't fit. Okay, once you get these plungers collapsed all the way back in, you can see they're all the way in there. Let's make sure that the boots aren't creased or folded over. <laughs> Give a little blow or dust. Get a little air gun, whatever. Get a little bit of that old uh, brake dust out of there. Um, one of the three or four areas that will grease will be right here. You want to put just a thin layer of grease on the rubber and on, on this metal. Because actually when these come out, you know, they will turn and... So you hit the back of that pad and you don't want it to squeak. Um, also, I just broke loose these two bolts. You do need a breaker bar or something with a lot of leverage on there. I couldn't even get my big, couldn't even get this big impact to take it off. But now they have it broke loose. I have one of these angle bits and it's an 18 angle. I'm not going to turn this on so you don't blow your ears out. But you can see there, I can get in on that angle. And up top there it can also get in on that angle so if you get one of those angled bits I just have a reducer on it because I don't have the half inch of that size so I'm gonna pull those out pull this caliper off we're gonna replace these clips we're gonna grease these clips up just a little bit right in here where your pad slides back and forth you know this is where sometimes people will put brakes in and you know when you hold the brakes, they don't squeak, but when you let off your brake pedal, 
these aren't really sliding as freely and nicely as they should so the pad will sit there and sometimes kind of go a little crooked or just not come back enough and you'll hear a squeak constant squeak in there especially if you don't have that hardware at all I've seen cars where people replace the brakes and didn't even put that hardware in so your pads basically floating around in there and you know if it doesn't meet up with with the perfect grooves that it's made over its life and it starts hitting out here then you're gonna get all sorts of noises um, I'll get that off and we'll pull the rotor off pull the rotor off you need a Torx 30 right here I'll put it on the end of a little impact right there comes out pretty easy I'll hold your rotor on and uh, we'll go from there like I said here's that piece of wire make sure you wire this up you don't want this to fall you don't want to break any brake lines or deal with any of that okay guys so I got that rotor off you can see here this is the hub and you could see where all the rust was in there and it wasn't seized on there but you know if I had let this go you know a lot more miles than it had it would have probably been a little more difficult to get off so I always as a rule of thumb I'll go ahead and slather this whole thing up here with um, anti-seize and again this is just aluminum anti-seize lubricant they make it in a copper make it in aluminum doesn't matter you don't have to go as intense as I am you don't have to cover this whole thing but you can obviously see where the rustiest parts were on there that will benefit you the most in the long run and it will not get on your rotor because the way it sits back in there in the back of your rotor you have you know three four inches so what you're seizing or what you're anti-seizing is the opposite side of this right here so you don't have to worry about it ever getting on your rotor and causing issues while you're actually driving same with the front it's going to be down under here so it's can't seep through and get out here onto your shiny rotor surface um yeah let me get that finished up put a rotor back on and we'll put some pads on okay guys i put these new clips in um you'll know they're in right because these will basically be lined up perfect here and here and they clip and push in um so there's three things that you're going to want to grease on here and on this it's kind of less is more because as your rotor is spinning through right here we're going to be greasing this which is letting your pad slide back and forth on each of these uh, hardware clips but you don't want grease to seep over here and get out and get onto your rotor because then it's just going to cause a squeaky rotor later down the road you'll have to really clean it off so we're going to grease that we're going to grease all that where the pad slides it will be on the outside of those clips same with the top one I'm going to do those and then another thing you can do it once it's on there you can do it now is most people will always forget about these but these are called your guide pins and these things believe it or not these need to move in and out just as smoothly as your pad so take that get a little, get a little good dipping going on you can't put too much in there but you want to just stick it back in and you know let it do its thing i know it's sexual orientation but you want to basically do it until there is no, you don't feel any like metal on metal in there. If you had to dab just a little bit more on there, it's fine. You want to make sure that kind of seals up and that presses back. Because when you put this back on the car, you'll press those in. And again on this side, just a little extra grease in there. Get it swooshed around. Make sure you don't hear any metal on metal in there. That means you got enough in there. Sometimes you're, um, when you push this back under, this part of the, the thing will kind of bubble out. Sometimes you got to get a little pick tool or a little screwdriver and get under there. You want to let the air out, you know, so it's still doing its thing. It almost has a vacuum in there. I guess it should have a vacuum in there, theoretically. So I'm going to get this mounted on the car, put a little grease here. And then you also will want to put some grease around here, like I said earlier. And then we'll get this put back together, and I'll show you the next video. Okay, I almost forgot a step. Don't forget this step, guys. This is a brand new brake rotor. I don't know if you can see here, but there's oil on here, and that's from when they machine these at the factory. They obviously have to use a oil on their 
creating die cut stuff like this or you know cutting stuff on this so we're gonna go ahead and spray it all down here with some brake cleaner on both sides that side and do the back side here And just make sure you do that over in a dirty box or whatever and then uh, give it a good wipe with a clean paper towel. Rotor on, put the 30, Torx 30 in there. Lubed up my hub with the anisees. These are the brand new brake pads. You notice the back one is has more of a square shape and the front one has that half moon banana shape. Um, got a little grease in there, a little grease there. These are greased down. I'm gonna undo this wire, put this back onto here. The, uh, put the two 19 mils back in here, tighten those down, put the wheel on, and um, looks like we're all done with this one. Okay guys, this is what it looks like finished. The new rotor on there, a little bit of NICs on there, didn't really matter. Um, but I sprayed the brake rotor again and wiped it down with a clean cloth. And just make sure there's no grease. If you do want to do a little bit of the back side, there's just a little bitty access kind of right in here. You can hold it and spin the rotor. Um, same with back there, otherwise you'll have that shield blocking you, but just give it a good couple more spray down. And wipe out, or you don't have to wipe it. It's alcohol, it will evaporate. Put your wheel on, you're all set. Make sure you got these uh, 19's in there, your plunger set really nice. Same on the bottom side there, make sure those are fairly tight. And you got your main 18 mils in there for your main bracket. Make sure you didn't damage any of your speed sensor, ABS wiring. Just inspect anything while you're down here. Check your tie rod ends, give those guys a couple squirts of grease if you want while your tire's off. And um, yeah, put your wheel back on. That is how you do the front brake rotors and pads on a 2015 to 2020 Suburban Yukon. And I'm 90% sure it covers all the Escalades as well. All right, good luck, guys. See you later.